So we've got a, a basic Pythagorean theorem question here. We have some information about two of the sides of a right triangle, and we want to figure out what the third side has to be. So the first thing I'm going to do at any time I have a practical question, a question that involves some kind of physical object or situation, first thing I do is draw a picture. All right, so I'm going to start uh, by drawing a right triangle. I'm going to put a little box down here, right, make it to clear uh, what the right angle is. And we're given information about the two legs. Now remember, the legs are the non-hypotenuse sides. And as far as the, the formula we're going to use here is concerned, it doesn't matter which one gets to be A and which one gets to be B. So I'm going to let A be the 9-inch side, and I'm going to let B be the 6-inch side. And that leaves uh, the hypotenuse. Of course, the hypotenuse is always going to be C. We're now ready to go to the formula. Right, we're given info just kind of what's going on in my head. We're given information about the sides of a right triangle. Anytime I have that kind of scenario, right, the Pythagorean theorem and its formula are kind of the first things I'm going to go to. Right, so formula, of course, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to put our numbers in there. I'm going to put 9 and 6 in for a and b. Uh, and now it, it's a bit of an arithmetic problem. 9 squared is 81. 6 squared is 36. And if we add those together, we get c squared equals 117. All right, so now we're almost done. Right? We've almost found the value of c. All you have to do is take the square root of both sides. And if we do that, we get c is equal to the square root of 117. Now we've got a couple of options. Right? If this were a practical problem, or if the question had specified give the answer as a decimal with a certain number of decimal digits, uh, then I get my calculator out. Right, and if I do that, my calculator says that C is approximately 10.817. But this question didn't say that. And if a question doesn't have something in it indicating that you're going to go to a decimal value for your final answer, the general rule is don't. There's nothing wrong with having a square root uh, as part of your final result. The one thing you do have to keep in mind, though, you always got to ask yourself, can we simplify this? Right, and, and looking at 117, that's equal to 9 times 13. Remember, if you remember our, our conversation about simplifying radicals, I broke it up that way because 9 is a perfect square. I know that the square root of 9 is 3. So 3 times the square root of 13 will be my final answer for this question. Because like I said, there's nothing indicating we need a decimal value. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the square root in my answer. So if you'd like to get the full context, you can click on the upper link here to see the corresponding lecture. And if you'd like to see another example, the link below will take you to another presentation where we talk about how to use the Pythagorean theorem. Technically, it's the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to go the other way and determine if three measurements can actually make a right triangle. And of course, finally, if you like this example or found it helpful, please don't forget to click on the like button below.